This segment of our show is brought to you by the new Realitol tablets. <laughs> Tennessee fans frustrated by the Vols' lack of success can take two of these little pills and instantly realize that the roster is young, it's missing a lot of offensive talent from a year ago, the schedule is murder, and Butch Jones is trying to create a mess that's three previous coaches helped create. Uh, then, just 20 short months from now, your head will clear, you'll be ready to watch Tennessee and what should be an improved Tennessee team. One warning, though. <laughs> Realitol tablets have not been tested on the criminally optimistic. There's Sterling Hinton yesterday, the criminally optimistic from yesterday's game. He was over there DJing, as he always does, inside Neyland Stadium. All right. A lot of folks, a lot of folks just not grasping. You know, and, and we knew it would happen. It happens at every program. We talk about it every summer. Expectations go up at the end of the year. I mean, at the end of the summer. And then when you don't hit them, when they're way too high, everybody gets mad again. When you've been saying all summer, don't expect much, don't expect much, don't expect much, and it doesn't do any good. So, Realitol tablets. All right. Uh, we talked about the pass rush. Will Overstreet, former UT and former NFL pass rusher, is going to break down five keys, five ways that Tennessee individuals can uh, create a pass rush against Georgia. Take a look at this. Thanks, John. A few weeks ago, we talked about to be a better pass rushing team, Tennessee had to work as a team. This week we're going to talk about what does the individual have to do because as good as a team can be, there's got to be individuals that win their one-on-one -on -one matchups. And a lot of people think it's just run down, run fast, get in front of them and you should be able to get there. But actually pass rush has a lot of technique and a lot of insider tips that most people don't know about. So there are five keys that I kind of listed out. There's plenty more. There's a whole book you can write on this. But the most important ones, and the most important of all of these, is get off. And what I mean by get off, the one advantage that any offensive has is the snap count. So a defensive lineman, as soon and as fast as they can react and get off the ball, gives them, closes the gap of that advantage that the offense currently has. There's a couple things that you can do. One, you can listen to the big, dumb offensive linemen as they come up to the line of scrimmage, because a lot of times they'll be talking about what is the snap count. There's a few other things, though, you can do as well. Looking at the quarterback's hands, a lot of times my advantage in get off was that a lot of quarterbacks had both their hands closed underneath the center when they were calling out the snap count. Well, he's not going to be able to get the ball if he's saying, hut, hut, hut. That's not the real signal. When you saw him open his hand, that meant that was the real signal. So I knew not to even have to worry about him pulling me off sides because all I could see was his hands. And as soon as his hands opened up, I knew the next sound was the snap. That's how you really get a great get off is getting those little bit of keys that you can find. The next one is leverage. Low man wins. The higher you are, the easier it is to, it, the easier it is to get beat. Because offensive linemen, let's face it, they hold all day long and on every single play. So if you give them your pads, they're just going to grab you right here and it's over. You're done, especially little defensive ends like me. So you have to be lower than them and make them go down and not be able to get a hold of you because if they get a hold of you, it's game over. Then there's the next thing, which is your man. Understanding your man, what he's good at, what he's not good at. If you watch enough tape, you're going to see guys that are really good at stopping a bull rush, but they are terrible at any kind of motion side to side. So you want to watch the individual and see who has he struggled against, who has he done well against, and really tailor your practice and your moves that week to what he's not good at and be using those throughout the game. The next one is the quarterback. A lot of guys forget this. The quarterback is important because understanding where he likes to escape to. Most right-handed quarterbacks go backwards and to the right when they see pressure. So understanding that if you're the defensive end to his right arm, that you need to be ready to be deep because that quarterback, if he gets pressure, is coming your side, but he's gonna back up and come your way. But if you're also the backside defensive end, that may give you a little bit more freedom to be able to take some risk and go inside on your offensive tackle. And then the last one is when to risk it. And every coach I've ever had would never say this, but they tell you always look at the ball. Don't, don't go on the snap count. There are certain times you can go on the snap count. If a team is backed up, let's say inside their own 30, and it's third and longer than eight, they're not gonna risk going on a hard count to get that down because they're gonna be more scared their offensive line is gonna jump off sides and put them in a deeper hole. So at those points in time, especially key points in the game, every once in a while as a defensive lineman, especially when you need a big play, 
You have to be very picky and choosy about it, but you have to be willing to risk it and basically say, I'm going to go and trust my instinct that this is going to work out. Now, what your coach will tell you, if you get it wrong, you're the biggest dummy in the world. If you get it right, I'm a heck of a coach and I can't believe I called that play. But you take the risk and you live with it. So John, hopefully the guys, the individuals on this team will also be able to take some of this year, some of the coaching they're getting from this new set of coaches and get improve and get a whole lot better at pass rush. Because for me, there's nothing worse than watching a quarterback come out with a clean jersey at the end of the game. All right, that's Will Overstreet uh, breaking things down in our advanced football segment. Shazan, you are a pass rusher. I want to go to you first. Have you seen anything so far that uh, tells you Tennessee can get some sort of pass rush against Aaron Murray in Georgia? They definitely have the athletes to do it. you got to watch the ball. Like I said, you got to be explosive. you got to come off the ball like you're running the 100-yard dash. And one thing about, regardless of who Tennessee's playing, you can rest assured they're going to play the best game they've ever played in Neyland Stadium. Every time, and that you know we come, we kind of look at, you know, different things. But that's watch the ball, get off, and I think we can get some pass rush. I think when they need to get some 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 blitzes between the tack the two tackles and the ends. Actually, I would put a, two linebackers in a tackle, send my linebacker and drop my line, drop my defensive tackle back in the coverage and try to get pushed that way. Guys. Thoughts I almost fell into you. Yeah. Hello, yeah, Bob. Yeah. <laughs> You're getting a little pressure on me now. <laughs> I, I think I think Chuck put something in my drink. Do <laughs> uh, you think they can get a pass rush? Anything? I, I think it's going to be hard if they don't blitz. I think if Tennessee yeah. rushes for because LSU rushed for a lot yesterday, you assume LSU's talent on the defensive line is a little bit better. They didn't do really well just rushing for people. So I think if they're going to, they need to bring some extra linebackers. I think they had a chance because I think Georgia's mm -hmm. offensive tackle was just okay in pass protection. But I do like what I saw out of Vereen and Miller toward the mm -hmm. end of the game. It would certainly help if Majid ever played again. I don't know yeah. if he is this year, but he would be one of their two or three best pass rushers if he was on the field. All right. When we come back, uh, will Connor Shaw miss the Tennessee game? And uh, we got another question about uniform. It's a gray uniform. By the way, it's just been announced in f officially that Tennessee Georgia will be a 3:30 kickoff next week on CBS. 3:30 next week, CBS. Georgia at Tennessee. Come on back on the Enrichment Sports Source.